Okay, I'm reloaded. Big Dappuccino here. Wow. Unexpectedly, I didn't expect to have this time off. But um, we're going through a lot of transitions at my job. As far as the way we schedule and payroll and stuff. So, it seems I had vacation days that I didn't even know about. I put it in for schedule. I put it in, but I didn't know it was approved, so... I done been through different supervisor, even the way we calculate our uh, time that we get paid is even different. So going from uh, an hybrid analog digital system to a more digital system, stuff been crazy at work. Of course, it's hot out. I live in Virginia, work in D.C., so stuff always going on, stuff going on in the world, so... Even building while work is going through transitions. We had stuff closing, stuff opening, going through construction, all types of stuff, man. But anyway, enough rambling. Let's get on with it. This is going to be a Hollywood car show. And what we have here on the pegs right now is the, uh, the Batmobile 1966 TV series version debuted in 2007. New models designed by Phil Rowman. It is actually a modified 1965 Lincoln Futura concept car. I want to say it was in. Uh oh. Um, dang. I was going to say Frankie Allen. I think his, is his name. No, his name ain't Frankie Avalon. What's the other? I always get them confused. But the guy who played in movies with Annette Fonticello, I think she was in the movie. Yeah, he was. They were in the beach blanket type movies. It was in one of those, I think. And this is from the Black, the Batman series, 2018. Of course, George Barris designed this. In real life. But always cool to have Batmobile. And I said this is from the Batman series 2018. Next we got. Uh, uh, we got Kit. Night Industries 2000. And this is the premium version. And this is debuted in 2012 new models designed by Brendan Vituski. Yeah. And this is the Replica Entertainment uh, 2021 version. Came out last year. Right now, I'm trying to find this two-pack or either the single. I think the single coming later, but the two-pack is supposed to be out now with kit and car. But my target locations are dry. I don't know. what's My target location, at least the one near me, is dry. And I went to the Walmart near my job. I thought it was going to be popping. It really wasn't. They were drier. I don't know. Real dry. They usually had Johnny Lightnings and on and M2, but they didn't really have too much. So, oh well. Let's move on. We all know Knight Rider. Cleaned it up a little bit. Looks good. Next, we got the um, the the Aston Martin 1963 DB5. They debuted in HW Workshop. HW All Stars 2014, designed by Fraser Campbell. Of course, all these ones are showing Hot Wheels. This is a Hot Wheels 2. This is premium. Uh, this is, of course, the battle damage version that appeared in James Bond movie No Time to Die from Replica Entertainment 2021. And I really like this car. Kind of speaks for itself. 
Now we're going to get into mostly premium, more upscale premium. First, we got the uh, the Green Light Hollywood 1972 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. I had to put something in it in order to keep the hood up so you can see the engine detail. You know, it's black. Like I said, this is 1972 Chevrolet Monte Carlo, Green Light Hollywood. has a 2018 copyright on the bottom but i think that's just for the casting i had this car since 2019 i think and this is from ace ventura the pet detector the first movie man he wrecked the mess out of this car <laughs> you ever seen the movie i think he even flipped it upside down and it's showing all the battle damage put that plastic piece in there so you can see the engine so for some reason the hood don't stay up i don't know if that's front by design or what but it's pretty cool car pretty cool i like stuff like this it, it has a lot of character uh next uh we got the 1983 gmc van dora which is to me, modify the custom because regular Van Door didn't look like this. And this is Greenlight Hollywood 2017 copyright date. Possibly had this in 2018 though. I had this since 2018. Of course, this is from the 18. B.A. Baracus drove this. Of course, Mr. T. And I had the Hot Wheels version, which was incorrect for the painting because it was all black and i think some toys cheaper toys they did the same thing but it 18 vehicle always had that silver it's like a, it's like i guess it's more of a gray and people would get that confused it got that gray at the top to separate it it's a pretty cool van remember one of my father's friends had a van GMC Van Door. I did he have a Chevy. Pretty much the same thing, but oh well. Guess I should have let that go around. No opening features on that. Next we have 1968. Excuse me. 1968 Ford Mustang GT Fastback. Green Lake Hollywood again. Has a 20, 2007 coffee rate date on the base. I think I had this since 2018. Not sure. This is from, of course, a replica from uh, the movie Bullet. Steve McQueen. And I actually seen this car in real life. It's actually really based on a car that was restored by the son of the guy who basically Steve McQueen hired to uh, help him modify. Basically, they did all the work. He just basically shelled out the money, modified the uh, Mustangs for that movie. And he kept one for himself. And... I think his son found it somewhere. I don't know if it was still in the family's possession. And he had it restored. And I think he sold it to, like, I want to say Haggerty. If you ever hear of Haggerty, I think Johnny Lightning actually does a series with Haggerty. I don't think Greenlight does it. But, um, yeah. They have, like a, like, a classic car registry or something. They used to have a magazine. I think it's published quarterly now, or they have a website, whatever. So I've seen this car in person on the mall in Washington where people are converging now for the holiday festivities. But I'm staying far away from that. And you can see that 390 that's supposed to be under there. All the patina and everything. It's real cool. I always had this on display on my TV stand. As I do with most of these pop culture 
icons. <clears throat> Next, we course got Pristine, the fully restored version from Greenlight Hollywood. And of course, Pristine is a 1958 Plymouth Fury. Even though we come to find out that Plymouth Furies did not come in this color in real life. They only came in the color beige. So most of them were actually Belvedere's. Which the Fury was basically a trim level. It was just like a like a, a performance level because the Belvedere's were supposed to be geared more to towards luxury. And the Furies were supposed to be more of a sports trim. So probably saying too much like I said this is this has a 2017 copyright date but I, I know that I had this car since 2018 I don't know if I had it since 2017 I also had a partially restored version and these are Auto Worlds the other one's Auto World too I should say and I think Auto World does the best Christine I think Green Light and Johnny Lightning had tried, and in the past, Hot Wheels even had one. So horrible. Uh, next, we got the uh, Ford Falcon XB from Green Light. I don't think this was Hollywood. It was something called Special. I don't know. They do them one off sometimes. And this was called Last of the V8 Interceptors, which it is an unauthorized Mad Max replica. Because I think the director and owner of the of the Mad Max franchise movies, Road Warrior, you know, all that Fury Road, what have you, Beyond Thunderdome, he is very particular about who he licenses stuff to. I don't even think he lets people license stuff after. Uh, action figures and, and stuff. He, he wants a piece of it. Trying to get his George Lucas on. So, green light, they got slick. And they did one. But they didn't get authorization, I think. So, I had this car since 2017 or 2018. Maybe since then, he's endorsed it. So, whoever the director or producer is, but, yeah. It's pretty cool, man. Mad Max. I think it's supposed to have a 351 under it. I think 351. I don't think it's supposed to be a 427, 428, 429. I might be wrong, though. It might be a 427 or 428. Who knows? I like yellow lights on this. I didn't notice that. Well, it's yellowed, I guess. The light colors. Because, of course, it doesn't look like this. This is a, a, a front nose. Kind of makes it look like a fox body. And this car was not really... I don't even know, think it was in the States. Definitely was in a European, Canadian market. Next, we have the Starsky and Hutch. Oh, they just stay. It's not going to stay for me. It stayed all that time. Oh, there you go. Got the Starsky and Hutch from Greenlight. Hollywood 2017 uh, this is 1976 for Gran Torino Sport I think originally they had I think it was a 75 or 74 I'm not sure when they first did the show I I think yeah I, I probably had this since 2017 a little siren fell off this because it wasn't secured. It was just sticks in that little hole. So, I'm not impressed about it. It's a good looking car, whatever. I would like to get the green, the later 
I think it's a later one. No, or an early one. I can't remember. I think it's earlier. Grand Torino. That that's that's uh featured in the movie Grand Torino with uh Clint Eastwood. I think that would be cool. Growing up, this used to be the car, man. Until, well, Dukes of Hazard ran back and forth. Like them and Dukes of Hazard. Until Knight Rider showed up. I think in like early 80s. And it just went down. Sweet. Only thing I think you know, the car in the TV show was a little had a little rake on it. That's all. And last but not least, oh, I got two more to go. So one more to go after this. Uh, this green light Hollywood has a 2005 coffee right. But I think I had this car since 2016 or 17. I think 2005 coffee rates for the casting period. It is a 1967 Chevy Impala Sport Sedan. It doesn't say it's a Super Sport. I don't see no Super Sport markings. So I guess a Sport Sedan is oh, is a notch above the base model. And of course, this is from Supernatural. I didn't even know they had four doors. My father, I think he had a two door. He had one of these when I was little. I think his was burgundy. He had a bunch of Impalas. He had a 65, a 65 or 66, a 67, a 68, and a 69. Just a sweet car, man. You see the orange block on that bad boy. Last but not least, we got this Dodge Challenger RT, which I think is from, it's supposed to be from Vanishing Point. I swear that I thought that uh, the car from Vanishing Point, at least, According to the movie, uh, what is it, Death Proof, it was supposed to be a 446 pack, but I guess I'm wrong. Maybe it was a 426 Hemi, because that's what I think you got with the RT. This is, like I said, Green Lake Hollywood, 2017 or 2018. It doesn't have any copyright date or any other indication on the base. Like I said, 1970 Dodge Charger. So, it's on the Hemi. It's not letting me know. It's got RT markings. I can't even see that. Just see the RT markings. There's probably something on the hood supposed to indicate what it is, but it's a sweet car. And that's pretty much it, man. That's a weird angle. Yeah, I just wanted to do something for my subscribers. Hollywood car show. You know, uh, I did some like i said i don't know if i mentioned i did some hunting like the other day so i got something for this week i have some time up coming off so it's coming up pretty soon so see if i try to get something else and not man i still got something for this week and i have an odds and ends video coming up like i always say this is not the best diecast channel not the worst either model here is show a little love for the diecast uh, for the random viewers, I hope you decide to uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification button. Of 
course, give me a like uh, or even leave a comment down below. Until the next time, this has been Big Guy Pacino, Hollywood Car Show. Peace and blessings.